This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So the next section in the chapter that we're going to look at is non-pool assets. So these are assets that are not going to go into the main pool or the special rate pool. They have their own separate column in the capital allowances computation. They are private use assets and short life assets. These are common in the exam. These not so much. Private use assets are the main ones that um, that you will come across. So this is where the owner of the business, and it's usually a car, owns a car and they use that for private use. So we will have adjusted the profits for that private use. And obviously now capital allowances, we're claiming the allowance for that car, but part of it is being used privately. And therefore we cannot claim a tax relief for it because the individual has to pay tax on that. Only the business proportion of the available capital allowances is given. So there are some rules of how this works. Okay, the cost is not put into the main or special rate pool. It has a separate private use column. Now you do get written down allowance or FYA if it's applicable or AIA if it's a private use asset, not a car, as normal. But then we have to do a separate calculation in order to be able to just claim in the allowances column the business proportion. Now on the disposal of an asset, there is a balancing adjustment, okay, using the lower of those two figures. And that's deducted uh, the uh, deducted from the tax written down value and you'll get a balancing charge if the proceeds exceed and a balancing allowance if the sale proceeds are less than the tax written down allowance so then you would have to do the um, work out the private proportion okay so again it is the private use so let's have a look at example number three we have Anya here who prepares accounts to the 31st of December. At the 1st of January 2023, the tax written down values brought forward. So we have a main pool of 21,200 and a car with 35 grams, um, only used 70% uh, for business and 30% private. So that needs a column on its own. Now we have some transactions that took place during the year. Okay, so we have plant and machinery. So we're going to need an AIA column. We're going to need a pool column. We're going to need a private use column. Um, we bought a car for £10,000, £600. It was CO2 emissions of 40% to be used by an employee. Now, they're going to use this. Don't be fooled by it, please. That employee will pay tax on the private use of that car through what's known as the benefiting kind system, which you will see in a different chapter. If it's for the employee, then you ignore that business private proportion. It isn't applicable. This car was bought for the business. The fact that the individual uses it, he'll be taxed individually and Anya, whose business it is, she can claim the full allowance from that. But she has sold her car and then it looks like she's bought another one. So we need two of those columns and we're going to work out the capital allowances on that. So let's do the calculation. We're going to set it up. It's the accounting period ended. 31st of December 2023 so we need several columns so we're going to move further over that's a calculation column we're going to need a main 
pool column. Private use car number one. She bought a second one. Private use car number two. And then we need an allowances column. All nice, neat, ordered, well presented. Let's do the written down values brought forward from the question. Let's copy these out. Pool 21,200 and the car was 13,600. Going to get a mark for copying. Excellent, isn't it? Additions. It's all about getting maximum marks. Okay, let's have a look at the addition. So what did we buy? We bought some plant, didn't we? Um, so that will go in the AIA column. And we will claim the AIA. So there's nothing in that column. Don't forget to take it across to the allowances column. Other additions. Tick them off as you do them in your question. So if we go back to the question, we, we've done that one. So now we have to do the car. So we had a car. Let's have a look again at the emissions. That was 40 grams. So if it's 40 grams, then it will go in the main pool which is this column, the amount 10,600. What else did we buy? Well, we sold that car, but we bought another car. Let's put that in first. Car private use two, so that we know. So that's going to go in this column, 16,000. Now, we then disposed of, always do your additions first, then your disposals. So we disposed of this car. So we disposed of car private use number one, and it's the lower of the two. Let's go back to the question and check. It doesn't give us, it just gives us £9,400. So let's put that in there. £9,400. And let's subtotal these three. So that is £31,800. That is £4,200. And that is £16,000. Always subtotal. And then we're going to start left to right. So we have written down allowance 18% on the main pool. Now in the car, we need a balancing allowance. We always claim it in full at that point. Always claim it in full. The, this column here is what we're going to claim on the right-hand side. But we always claim in the capital allowances computation the, the amount in full. Now, we can only claim, according to this, what was the private use on this? Let's just check. She uses it 30%. So we can only claim 70% of this. 70%. Therefore, our claim is only 2,940. On our other car, we can claim 6%, which is 960. Again, it is a private use car, so we can only claim 70%, which is 672. When you've finished your calculations, always finish off what's going on. So our main pool has a written down value carried forward 
of 26,076. That car has been disposed of, so therefore there is nothing left in that column. And this is 15,040. And the main claim of all our allowances, which is then deducted from deduct from tax adjusted profits. Okay, so moving on from there, we sometimes have short life assets. This is um, not common anymore, but just to be aware of the various different rules. So what you can do is you can make an election to omit what's classed as a short life asset from going into the main pool and put them in their own columns so that you, you you can calculate what's going on with that asset individually. It's known as a depooling election. Um, and it's short life if it has within eight years, you're going to have a low re residual value or you're going to scrap it. Um, you cannot have a depooling election on a car. Um, you calculate it separately, so you put it, um, you can get the written down allowance on that, but you calculate it separately. You put it at the uh, in its own column. Uh, at the end of, it uh, says there, a disposal within eight years of the end of the accounting period in which the acquisition took place, there is a balancing allowance or a balancing charge. If no disposal takes place within eight years, then that is transferred back into the pool. You can get AIA on these short life assets. Um, so be aware of that. Now, this is why it's uncommon, because at H it says, given the amount of AIA that's available, which we know to be a million pounds, it's very unlikely that the depooling election will now be worthwhile for most unincorporated traders. An exam question may still be set, of course, for an unincorporated trader selling a short life asset where the election had been made previously. So it will actually come forward as a written down value brought forward as a short life asset. And then you've got to um, sell it. So and that give a balancing allowance or a balancing adjustment to test that ability to remember what to do with it. An example four below, however, shows both the election being made and the resultant effect on the disposal of the asset. So, Malik prepares accounts to the 31st of March each year. At the 1st of April, the written down value on the pool was 16,000. In July, we bought some planter machinery worth 1 million and 20,000 pounds. They bought a photocopier, made it a short life asset, and then the copy was sold. So we're going to have a look at the capital allowances for two years, because you notice it was sold in 24-25, for the year to March 24 and the year to March 25. So let's have a look and see how that will look in a pro forma. So in the accounting period... to the 31st of March 24. Now this is why labels are important because you've got two years here. We have a main pool, an AIA pool, and a short life asset column and some allowances. We have written down a value brought forward of 16,000. And we have additions. And we paid 1,020,000 for that addition and a photocopier of 40,000.
Now the maximum AIA you can have is one million pounds. Which means we have 60,000 left. Now, 20,000 of that is the balance on the plant and machinery. And 40,000 is the balance on the short life asset. So this is now nil. 36,000, 40,000. So our written down allowance, 18% on 36,000 is 6,480. And then we have a written down allowance on our short life asset of 7,200. So these are our subtotals. And this is the amount of allowances that we can claim. So that's the first year. So what I'm going to do now is show you the model answer for this to explain um, certain different aspects and we'll have a look at that now. So you see here in the model answer that it looks slightly different because I've done this here with the model answer in the AIA column. Be very careful and clear if millions are involved. It is rare in an exam but if it does come up in an exam Make sure that you either write it out in full like we just did or you write it like this so it's clearly visible that this is in the millions. And obviously, we notice here on the edge in the allowances column, I've written it out in full. OK, be careful. Don't, because obviously these numbers further down are not in the millions and you need to make sure that you don't start putting points in there. Um, you're going to get all messed up. OK, so it's OK in this piece here, but it's not OK over there. Write it out in full. Now, the new pro forma then for the next year. I haven't followed it through in the sense that I have finished that one off and given a new heading here. If you have to do two years like that, please do that separately. Uh, don't follow it through. Bring the, the, the um, written down values brought forward. Now, this short life asset has now been sold. Per the question. Um, main pool, 18%. £5,314 is the amount we can claim in the allowances column. This short life asset, we have not over its short life claimed sufficient allowances to write it off to nil. So instead of claiming it over that eight year period, we've sold it early and we are entitled to claim all the rest of the allowances in one go. It is a balancing allowance, not a written down allowance. So make sure that you put the correct wording in there. Claim it in full, add all the allowances up and deduct from your adjusted profits. Finish your pro forma off. Obviously this is gone, therefore it, it should be zero and that will be carried forward to the next uh, computation.